Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So I've been talking about dating and being in relationships with narcissistic people. If you have not seen my previous two videos, then definitely click the I at some point. is definitely going to take you to those videos. And of course, if you missed the I because you have gotten wrapped up in what I have to say, then definitely click the description box below after this video and go ahead and watch those two. So I gave you tips on what a narcissistic person is and the traits that you're going to see as far as identifying a narcissistic person. The second video was talking about the five tips on how to stay sane with uh, dating or being in a relationship with a narcissistic person. And so today I want to give you eight tips on how to be happy in your relationship with a narcissistic person. So stay tuned. All right, family, thank you so much for coming back. So the eight tips on how to stay happy in a narcissistic relationship. The very first one is to try to introduce empathy to your partner, your lover, your spouse. Um, you have to get them to see and basically put them put themselves in your shoes so they can actually understand the feelings that you are having. So try to introduce empathy empathy to your narcissistic person and all of these things are going to take work it's not like you introduce the concept and then you never have to bring it up again it's going to be constant work if you want your relationship to work and also if you want your narcissistic partner not to be so narcissistic anymore or at least um, get them to see when they are being narcissistic and they can reel it in themselves okay so that's the very first thing is to try to introduce empathy to your partner the second thing is for you to challenge them like don't just go along with their program obviously if you are with the second type of narcissistic person that I talked about which is the um, pathological narcissistic person which they can become kind of lethal or um, controlling then of course you don't want to try challenge I wouldn't I wouldn't challenge them because I don't want to get into a fist fight when I'm just using some particular words that take them over the edge. But you can challenge them in a soft manner, quote unquote. Don't necessarily just always go along with their plan, with their program, with their system. Especially if you don't want to do those things. You, you have the right to use your power in your no. So challenge them a little bit. If, if you can, if you feel comfortable in doing that. The third thing that I want to bring to your attention is a lot of times with narcissistic people, they can do the name calling and insults and everything. And you don't want that to be allowed in your relationship. So you have to speak up and say something about that if it's not working for you. Specifically on how they're talking to you or whatever it is. You have to speak up for yourself if it's not working for you. Now, if you're okay with it, then all right, we can move on because each of us can take different things in our relationships. So what I could take in my relationship, you might not be able to take in yours and vice versa. Just something for you to think about. If you don't want the names and insults to be used against you or on you, then you have to speak up and say something about those things. All right, so number four, only take responsibility for things that are actually your fault because you're dealing with a narcissistic person who loves to use manipulation or take uh, or turn things around on you so you think that it was your fault on what happened you have to realize that's what's going on and not take fault or not say sorry for those specific things that you know were not your fault you, because, you, again, you have to realize that they are turning things around on you. Or what's the word that I used the other day? Um, they're gaslighting you. <laughs> so you just have to be, you just have to recognize that's what's actually going on. You don't want to get gas lit. If that's the word, I don't know. The fifth thing to stay happy in your relationship is just not to react to their outbursts. Just don't even do it. It's going to happen. You know this is going to happen. It's probably going to happen more often than you personally would like. But don't react to the outburst. And my best um, story to go along with this is just you know how children do. 
And when, when you when you don't recognize the crying, the screaming, the the falling out, uh, temper tantrums is the word I'm looking for. When you don't recognize any of that stuff, what they end up doing? They stop. They kind of looking around because you probably you know, walked away. You know, if it's in a safe environment in your home or whatever, you walked away from you let them do what they needed to do as far as throwing that temper tantrum, and then you just walked away from them. That's the same thing that you have to do with the outburst of the narcissistic person that you're dealing with. Just move over life, let them have their moment by themselves, and you walk out of the room or do what you need to do. Just don't even acknowledge that stuff. Oh, so I talked about gaslighting. I'm going to bring it up here again. Just refuse it. Just, just don't let them get away with doing that, which is once you start bringing up their bad behavior, then they start to change everything around on you, start bringing up all your past and what you, what you used to do. By the time they're finished, dog you out, insulting you in this particular moment. Now you're thinking, what did I actually do to deserve this? Like, did I actually cause this? Because they're using manipulation. Once again, that word, they're using manipulation against you to think and to make you feel like it was your fault because you brought up their bad behavior. Number seven, stop things from getting so personal. When you do confront them, don't confront them and make it personal. Only address the facts. Only address the facts. Don't make it personal. Straight to the point. Not this long drawn out explanation or this long drawn out story. Just make it streamlined or straight to the point. From point A to point B. Get there quick, fast, and in a hurry. And I would say do it in that moment, honestly. Because a lot of times when we try to bring things up later on... We don't have no idea what the other person is talking about. When the the picture for them is vivid, it is very clear, it is right there in their minds, but you're looking like, or you're trying to figure out what happened. You know, why are they bringing up this, this thing that happened weeks ago, months ago, when it should have been addressed right away. So if you can address it right away, they'll know exactly what you're talking about in that moment. No guessing needed. The eighth thing. The eighth and final thing is that you really just have to love yourself more than you love them. Especially with all of these seemingly bad behaviors. But again, if you can deal with this type of thing, then just trying to make sure that you are making yourself happy is the priority and not you putting yourself in the background. So these are the eight tips on how to stay happy when you are dating or in any relationship with a narcissistic person. What did you think about them? Can you relate to any of these things? Do you do any of these things? <laughs> do you know somebody that you can pass along this video to share this video with so they too can also take some of these things in mind and again, make a decision if this is something that you want to deal with long term or not. All right. I will see you in a few days for the last video of this series talking about how to deal with how to uh, how to um, to recognize narcissistic people, the traits, how to stay sane, how to stay happy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'll see you in a few days. Deuces.